perfect. Genesis 50, and uh, we're going to look at the last several verses here uh, of this um, uh, passage of Scripture. Genesis chapter 50. Now, Genesis is a great book, um, and here's, here's what we need to understand. When you're studying Bible uh, and theology, which is, uh, uh, as we say, the Word of God, the book of beginnings, Genesis, is a book of beginnings. They talk about the doctrine of first mention, the doctrine of first mention. And uh, much of what's recorded all throughout Scripture is first recorded in Genesis. And, and so it builds a foundation as uh, we begin to learn that doctrine uh, as we uh, proceed through the book of the Bible. Now, when we come to Genesis chapter 50, I want us to look beginning in verse number 15. Genesis 50 and uh, verse number 15. Let's all stand tonight uh, in respect to the reading of God's Word. And uh, those of you that are at home, go ahead and take your Bibles and you follow along with me if you would, please. But Genesis chapter 50, last, last chapter in Genesis. And let's read beginning in verse number 15. The Bible says, And when Joseph's brethren saw that their father was dead, they said, Joseph will peradventure hate us, and will certainly requite us of all the evil which we did unto him. And certainly they did a lot of evil to Joseph, their younger brother, when they sold him um, into slavery. And they sent a messenger unto Joseph, so they were willing even to go and face him face to face. They sent a messenger saying, Thy father did command before he died, saying, Even to the last. Uh, they're lying. They're trying to deceive and, and trying to uh, not take responsibility. And so they're saying, our dad said, commanded you to do this. And so verse 17, so shall you say unto Joseph, forgive, I pray thee now, the trespass of thy brethren and their sin, for they did unto thee evil. And now we pray thee, forgive the trespass of the servants of the God of thy father. And Joseph wept when they spake unto him. His brethren also went and fell down before his face, and they said, Behold, we be thy servants. And Joseph said unto them, Fear not, for am I in the place of God? But as for you, ye thought it evil against me, but God meant it unto good, to bring to pass as it is this day, to save much people alive. Now therefore fear ye not, I will nourish you and your little ones, and he comforted them and spoke kindly unto them. Thank you, Lord, for the Bible and to this story in particular as it gives us, uh, Lord, a foundation, uh, Lord, in regards to our interaction with people, in regards to uh, life's events that come into our lives that are not pleasant, uh, things that happen to us that are very disappointing and disheartening. And uh, it lays a foundation for us of how to deal uh, with uh, these type of events in our lives. Uh, Lord, help us to learn something tonight that will really help us to be a better Christian and a better testimony in the world in which we live. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. You can be seated if you would. I've entitled the message tonight, It's All Good, It Really Is. It's All Good, It Really Is. Uh, as we think of that little phrase, uh, it's all good, uh, you wake up in the morning when you have a flat tire, it's all good. It really is. You don't know what that flat tire may be saving you from. It's all good. It really is. Maybe you've lost your job. It's all good. It really is. It doesn't mean that everything happened this way, uh, the way I want it to happen. It means this. I know that my God is in control of my life. And all the details that involve my life tells me that I can say, no matter what's going on in my life, it's all good. It's all good. That little phrase can revolutionize whether or not you endure life or enjoy life. That little phrase can make the difference of whether you triumphantly go through life uh, or go through life as, as a, a tragedy after tragedy and heartache after heartache. Uh, it gives you a reason for which to have a joy and a, a little uh, uh, extra bounce in your step as you, as you live life. It's all good. It really is. Uh, that little phrase can cover a multitude of emotions and feelings that we may be going through at different times of our life. It's as if we're saying, I'm going to choose to rise above my circumstances. I don't like what I'm going through, but it's all good. I don't agree with everything that's happening in my life, but you know what? It really is. 
It really is good. And uh, I don't understand why God is doing all of this, but it's all good. I might be sad tonight, but it's all good. I might be hurt tonight, but it's all good. I might be confused about what God is doing in my life, but it's all good. And I might be disappointed in what others are doing uh, against me and in my life, but it's all good. And, and so as we come to the closing verse of the first and foundational book of the Bible, we read of a story and some profound verses that can give us comfort and strength in times of difficulties, in times of disappointment, and that most of us, if not all of us uh, are very disappointed uh, with some things that are happening in our country and the things that we're seeing all about us. But may I say tonight, it's all good. It really is all good. And so we come here to the book of Genesis, uh, some of the most profound verses in the Bible. We come to an incident to which we see the true heart, the true character of a man called Joseph. Joseph is an amazing an amazing man. Uh, what if we went through uh, just a smidgen of what he went through and to keep the spirit and the attitude and the outlook and the disposition that he had, we'd be a great Christian. And uh, he was an amazing man of God and an amazing servant of God that knew what it was to grow in his trust with God. He was sold into slavery as a young 17-year-old boy. I mean, he's just a teenager. Uh, he wasn't yet matured enough uh, to face the trials of life and the hardships of life. Oftentimes, we look at older people and say, well, you've had the, the years to trust in God and you've had uh, the years to grow in your faith in God. But may I encourage you tonight, uh, whether you're 17 uh, or 20, or 25, you can trust God. You can believe in God because God is a good God all the way across the board, whether you're a young person or whether you're an old timer. You see, Genesis, the book of beginnings where we learn to trust God. And so we're going to look today at the story of God and God really is in absolute and supreme control of the universe and of all of history. We have the privilege to look back at history, and we've seen uh, some good choices and bad choices, and we've seen some of the consequences and repercussions that have come because of those choices, good or bad, and we look back uh, with uh, uh, insight and a perspective that those going through it at that time could not see, and may I say, what we're going through today as a nation, as a country, as a people, in your life, we can't see all the details, but looking back and looking from God's perspective of eternity, it's all good, it's all good, it really is all good good. We look at Genesis. The book of Genesis opens in the early chapters revealing to us that God is a creator of all things. And the book of Genesis closes revealing to us that God is a controller of all things. So God creates everything and God controls everything. And the book of beginning from the first to the last of Genesis builds a foundation that God creates and God controls everything with him our universe. Now look at verse number 20 of uh, chapter 50, the last uh, chapter of Genesis. And notice what Joshua says, or I'm sorry, um, Joseph says uh, to, uh, to his brothers, the messenger comes. The messenger says, Daddy told us uh, that you better forgive us. And uh, they, they didn't go there initially and say, we're sorry, we were wrong, forgive me. They sent a, 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 a lead person to say, you need to forgive them. And uh, you need to let them off the hook. And uh, they were scared because they did wrong. And uh, they had been caught. But look at what Joseph says in uh, verse uh, by the way, let me just show you in verse number 15. It's not the message. Or verse number 19. Joseph said unto them, Fear not, for am I in the place of God? Hey, when you refuse to forgive someone, you put yourself in the place of God. That's not a good place for you or I to be in. God, Joseph said, listen, how can I not forgive you? I'm not God. And uh, God has forgiven me uh, so much worse than I have ever done to him. How can I not forgive you? And you as a child of God, and you and I must have a heart of forgiveness and a heart of compassion. And say, listen, I'm not God to hold a grudge against you. I'm not God to hold bitterness against you. I'm not God to hold resentment and forgiveness. I'm not God. So because of that, I'm forgiving you. 
that's between you and God. Whatever you did to me, God will take care of it. However unjust you were to me, God will take care of it. However unkind you were to me, Joseph said, God's going to take care of it. I'm not God. I'm not going to take care of that. But then we come down to verse number 20. The Bible says, but as for you, he says, your intentions, your uh, plans was what? You thought evil against me, but God meant it unto good to bring to pass as it is this day to save much people alive. The answer that Joseph gives, the answer to his brothers uh, when they feared him the most was to take revenge on them. That's what they thought he was going to do. That's what they would have done. And uh, you do me wrong, I'm going to do you wrong. You hurt me, I'm going to hurt you. And uh, you be mean to me, I'm going to be mean to you. The brothers felt that Joseph uh, was going to revenge and retaliate. They feared for the lies. How could he escape Joseph, the bitterness and the abusive treatment that his brothers gave to him? The answers found that Joseph understood the role of God's sovereignty in his life. He understood, but God meant it for good. Though you meant it for evil, God can take it all and work out. That word meant is an interesting word, uh, but God meant it unto good. The word that can be defined, uh, meant can be defined as the past participle of the word to mean, which is to intend for a particular purpose or destination. You probably heard someone say something that was very unkind, uh, maybe do something that lacked tact and, uh, and uh, common courtesy, and someone tries to cover it up by saying, they meant well. They didn't mean any harm by it, and they, they, they didn't mean anything by it. They meant well. And so they're just saying, they're trying to cover for the wrong that was done. What they're saying is that even though the person said or did something that was negative, that was not their intention. That was not their goal. They hadn't meant to cause harm to you, but that wasn't the case with Joseph's brother. They meant to do harm to Joseph. They meant, the Bible says, to do evil uh, unto Joseph. That was their intention to uh, say, uh, they dropped him, you know, uh, took the coat of, uh, of colors that his daddy had, had made for him. And uh, they, they, they killed an animal and put that blood on that coat, took it back, taking it back to their dad, saying, We found this coat in the wilderness somewhere, and some animal has killed Joseph. And they caused the grief and the heartache to their dad as though that son had died. When all they had put him in a pit, and uh, this caravan came through uh, and uh, heading to, uh, uh, to Potiphar's uh, house and, and uh, they sold Joseph uh, into slavery as a result of, of uh, that action. And we see the, dis the, the disappointment and the discouragement that was there. And so they meant wrong. They meant evil. Joseph's brothers didn't mean well. They wanted to cause harm. They wanted to ruin his life. They wanted to defron dethrone him from the position of importance that he had come to be uh, believed that he would hold one day. They meant bad. They meant evil. But I like these, next, these words that precede meant but God. Those are probably the two most powerful words that you'll ever find in the Word of God. But God. Uh, but God. And uh, but God in Scripture, you better pay attention when you see those two words. What comes next uh, will usually change the entire situation. It doesn't look good. But God, and uh, the storm's raging, but God, the, the obstacles are big, but God. Listen, when God shows up and you see but God on the margin of your Bible, you can mark it down. There's a change about to take place. There's a miracle that's about to happen. There's something that God's about to do, but God, but God. And God looks at your life, and don't eliminate God. Let God be an active part of your life, and especially when meant is added after God. But God meant. God meant. But notice the next thought. We look here in verse 20. God meant shows what God can do with something meant to harm you. You see, the brothers meant evil. God meant good. Uh, the brothers meant death and destruction. But God took that harm and that evil and that uh, pain that was inflicted, and God meant it unto good. You see, God can not only protect you uh, in, uh, in the problem, but he can also promote you uh, because of the problem. After 13 years of heartache, after 13 years of trials, after 13 years of adversity, God not only vindicated Joseph, but God promoted Joseph to second in command of the land, and the famine was going to come, and God finally came through. It took 13 13 years of injustice, 13 years of heartache, but God, but God meant it for good. Oh, don't eliminate the power of but God. And I know it doesn't look good in your life, 
But God is still a part of the equation. I know the answer of prayer doesn't look like it's coming. But God, but God is the power that's lacking that you need. But God is what will strengthen your faith in times of discouragement. But God is what will give us the courage to go on when we don't want to go on any further. So meant in God, but God meant uh, it unto good. He was put second in the command of the whole nation. Looking back, Joseph would tell you that the whole time that God was directing his steps, although bad breaks were part of God's plan, 13 years of injustice, 13 years of heartache and pain and uh, deception uh, that he had to go through, whatever he went through, God allowed it because God took what they intended for evil, but God meant it unto good. God can take the heartache and the ruin and the disappointment and the trials that Satan used to destroy us. And when you get God in the equation, God can turn all around for good. And we thank God we serve that kind of God. The exact thing Joseph's brother had meant to cause him harm was the exact thing that God used to promote him to a position of greater good. God has a greater blessing for you, but you got to let but God be a part of your life. God has a greater opportunity to use you, but you got to let the but God meant well. Let God go through the hardships of your life. Listen, quit fighting everything you don't like in your life. God wouldn't have allowed it if it wasn't going to move you forward to greater blessings greater opportunities and greater usefulness to God. Quit resisting what God has allowed in your life and let God do what God's wanting to do through the trials and hardships and problems that are a part of your life. You thought, he says, you thought evil against me, but God meant it unto good. This introduces a characteristic and an attribute of God that is often called the providence of God. No matter what the intention of people, be it good or bad, God will always bring about his ultimate end. That's a providence of God. That's a divine providence of God's sovereign hand in our life. What God means to happen will ultimately happen. God coordinates. God organizes all the apparently independent activities and thoughts and ideas and movements of people that pulls them all together and makes them harmonize one to another to affect his ultimate end. Or it may not be within his original plan and his original purpose, but nothing will detour what God has wanted to accomplish in his life our lives and the purpose will be accomplished. His providence will accomplish what God desires for it to be accomplished. The devil may attack you, but he intended for you evil. The world may have abducted you, intending it for your evil. Your enemies may have assaulted you, intending it for your evil. Your friends and family may have abandoned you, intending it for your evil. But God was in control all the time. He was in control intending it, meaning it for what? You're good. God's providence will come about in time, 13 years. But God's providential hand was seen. And Joseph said, fellas, don't be afraid. Don't be fearful. He says, who am I? I'm not God that I can't not forgive you. He says, you meant it for evil. He didn't bury his head in the sand and say, fellas, you, 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 didn't, you, you didn't mean that. He says, you meant to destroy me. He says, you meant evil against me. Uh, you were trying to wreck my life. You were trying to bring heartache into my life. You meant my demise. But God, God turned all around, fellas, because God will always do what God always does. Because God is God. In spite of our imperfections, in spite of our shortcomings, in spite of our failings, God will always do what God intended to do in our lives. And so we look at our lives uh, today and we ask the question, why? Is it all good? It really is. The message tonight, it's all good. It's all good. Uh, it really is. Why is it all good? Because God is always good. That's why it's all good. Preacher, how can you say it's all good uh, when the doctor report comes back? How can you say it's all good uh, when you get cut back in hours at work? And how can you say it's all good when there's this hardship and this trial? It's all good. Why? Because God is always good. That's why we can say that God is good or that all is good. Most of us are so quick to see God's goodness in the blessings of life, but we're not so quick to discern the goodness of God in the trials of life. The strength of our faith. 
The maturity of our faith is seen not and recognized in the goodness of God, in the blessings of God, but seeing the goodness of God in the trials of life and the hardships of life and saying God is good. It's all good. It really is. It's not just a little slogan you say. It really is good. It's not just a power of positive thinking. It really is. It really is good. It really is. How come? Because God is always good. God is always good. good. God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. And I may not understand it. I may not perceive it. I may not comprehend it. I may not see it and, and, and visualize it. But I know for sure God is good all the time. There's never a time that God is not good. You say, well, what good uh, is there? All of it. Absolutely everything, as long as God's involved in the details, it should encourage us as a child of God. It should be the mindset of every child of God. I'm not, uh, I, I may not like everything that's happening in my life. I may not be thrilled about what God's allowing in my life, yet I can rest in the assurance of no that there's never a time that God is never always good. And so I can say, it's good. It really is. How come? Because God is always good. He's always good. Now, if you're focusing on what's going on in your life, you may not be able to say all is good. But when you use your focus on God is always good, then we can know that whatever is going on in your life, you can say it's all good. You say, preacher, why is it all good? Well, number one, because God is always good. And number two, may I say, because God always does good. Not only is God always, because God is always good, but because God always does good. Take your Bibles. Let's go to uh, James chapter 1. James chapter 1, and look with me, if you would, in verse uh, number um, 17. James chapter 1 and verse number 17. God is always good. And why is, why is it all good? Uh, it really is uh, because God always does good. It's all good. It's all good. Preacher, did you hear what happened? Amen. It's all good. It's all good. Now, it may, doesn't mean I'm not disappointed, but it's still all good. It really is. It doesn't mean I agree with that, but you know what? It's all good. Why? It really is. It doesn't mean I understand it, but it's all good. It really is. And that's the mindset of a child of God. We have to have that mindset. It's all good. Why? Because God's always good. Number two, God always does good. You got to James chapter 1 and look in verse uh, number 17. James chapter 1, verse 17. Every good gift... And every perfect gift is, where is it from? It's from above. And coming down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. God says it all comes from above. It's all good. Why? Because God always does good. If it's allowed into my life, then God does good. Uh, if God permits it into my life, then God does good. Because God always does good. Because God's thoughts are so much higher than our thoughts. Because God's ways are so much higher than our ways. We don't always see the goodness in the painful situations of life. Many of you have had a, had a very challenging, difficult year this year, whether medically or, or maybe just, uh, just some financial challenges or relationships or whatever it might be. And uh, you've had some, some hard, painful experiences uh, this year. And it's often difficult for all of us as Christians to be, no matter how long you've been saved, to be able to, see, to, be able to say it's all good. It really is. When you're looking at your life uh, situation, it's hard to see uh, the goodness of God and that God always does good uh, when we don't always see his goodness in the painful situations. We ask, if God is so good, why do bad things happen in my life? And you can list some of those bad things that maybe have happened in your life this year. We forget that God's perspective is superior to ours. There's an interesting verse that God uh, sort of... Um, resets, hits a reset button in, in uh, Job's life. Take your Bibles, if you would, and go to Job 42. Job was a great man, a great man. And uh, he went through so much troubles and trials and grief and heartache and disappointment. And, I mean, he went, he went through the ringer, I'll tell you what. And, and he went through it not because of any sin on his part, but God was bragging on him and uh, said, Have you seen my servant Job? Well, I'll tell you what, he eschews evil. He loves me. He follows me. He's trying to do right. And uh, Satan said back to God, well, no wonder he serves you. No wonder he trusts you and loves you. You've put a hedge about him. You protect him. Everything he touches is blessed of you. And everything he does, everything goes well. And uh, who wouldn't believe and trust and love you? And uh, God allowed Satan in that instance. He says, all right. I'm going to show to you, I'm going to prove to you that Job doesn't serve me for naught. 
Job doesn't serve me because of what I can do for him. Job serves me because of who I am. God wants to know in our lives that we serve him, we trust him, we love him. Not because of what he does or doesn't do in our lives, but because of who he is. Remember Wednesday night when I said our hope as a believer has never been, is never recorded in Scripture. Concerning our hope is not found in what God can do for us. Our hope is always to be found in who God is. God will do much more than we'll ever imagine or ever deserve. But our hope is not in what he does. Our hope is in who he is. And the character of God. And so Job, but, but God had to hit. Job was a man like us. And uh, you imagine going through all that Job went through. Maybe God had to sort of hit some reset buttons in his heart and his focus. And this is example here. Look, look in uh, Job 42 and uh, verse, verse number 1. It says, Then Job answered the Lord and said, I know that thou canst do everything, and that no thought can be withholden from thee. Who is he that hideth counsel without knowledge? Therefore I have uttered that I understood not. Things too wonderful for me, which I knew not. Hear, I beseech thee, and I will speak. I will demand of thee and declare thou unto me. I have heard of thee by the hearing of the ear, but now my eye seeth thee. Wherefore I abhor myself and repent in dust. And ashes. God, you, you can read the previous verse of that this week, but God had to sort of jerk Job's chain a little bit and uh, say, where were you when I created the universe? Where were you when I did? And so he had to sort of bring him back into perspective. And Job says, he comes to a conclusion. This is the end of all the heartaches, trials. God doubled. We know the last part as we read on. God doubled blessing-wise, children-wise, everything that Job had. That didn't take away the pain of the loss of those children and, and the loss of all that he had. But to notice what, what Job says here um, uh, in, in the verses here. He says, I know thou canst do everything. He says, God, Job said to God, he says, there's nothing you can't do. You can do everything. And no thought can be withholden from thee. Who is he that hideth counsel without knowledge? He says, therefore I have uttered that I understood not. Things too wonderful for me, which I knew not. Job came to the conclusion in his life. He says, you know what? I haven't understood why you've done what you've done. It's too wonderful for me to even comprehend it. You say, how could he come to the conclusion that it's too wonderful, as he says here, things too wonderful for me, which I know not. How can you put too wonderful and list all the heartaches, all the challenges and the grief and sorrow that he went through because he realized something very important. He says, there's a lot of things I don't understand, but I do understand this. God is a sovereign God, and all that God does in my life, it's good. I may not see the good in the pain. I may not see the good in the heartache. I may not understand it because it's not too painful for me to understand it's too wonderful. I don't know if we're there yet in the pains of life, but what an example to look to where he looks at his hardship and says, oh, it's been too much for me to bear, too painful to endure. He says, it's too wonderful. Too wonderful, he says, for me, which I know not. Here I beseech thee, he says, verse 4, and I will speak. I will demand of thee and declare thou unto me. Here it is, verse 5, I have heard of thee by the hearing of the ear. Look what he says, but now mine eye seeth thee. I'm going to use this verse in Sunday school uh, in the next several weeks, but uh, I've been teaching about perspective, our eyes being open. Some things that our eyes will only be open to will only be opened when we properly go through suffering and trials in our lives that we'll see God in a way that we will never see, our eyes will never be open unless we see the pains of life as too wonderful for me to understand. Not this is too much for me to bear, too hard for me to endure, but too wonderful for me to, to understand. And he says, I've heard thee, and I says, I've seen thee. You need to see God, and you won't see God to the extent he needs to be seen 
unless you go through some suffering and difficulties and come to the conclusion, all that God is, is good. All that God does is good. And when you begin to see your life situations and all that is being done in your life as being good and being allowed from God, you'll be able to say, now I see God. There's things too wonderful for me to see. It's an amazing thought there. It's a neat study uh, as you look at that. So Job accused, uh, as we look at this thought, he didn't uh, accuse God of, of being unjust or ask God to bend the rules or, or disregard his goodness. Uh, he, he began to trust God. And he saw God from different perspective. And so suffering and heartache began with Adam and Eve. Why? They doubted the goodness of God. They doubted that God was good. And uh, listen, it, it's good. Uh, it's all good. Uh, it really is. Why is it all good? because God's always good and God always does good and sin and heartache began in Genesis when they doubted the goodness of God and they began to question the goodness of God yea if God said God's holding out on you and God doesn't want you to enjoy what God's holding from you no everything God does is good and the restrictions and the guidelines and, and the rules and the restrictions are all there for your good even though you may not like them they're all there for our good. The serpent convinced them that the Lord was trying to cheat them of his goodness. And, uh, and how often we believe the same lie. Yet behind every one of the Lord's restrictions and exhortations and commands is the goodness of God. He wants to protect us from torment and consequence of sin. And if you can trace, if you can't trace God's hand, then discern what he's doing in the difficult situation. Remember that he does good. He is good. He does care. And you don't see God, but you know God. He always is, always does. Good. So what can we say? It's all good. It's all good. I, it doesn't mean I agree. doesn't mean I understand. doesn't mean I like it. doesn't mean it's not painful. doesn't mean it's not disappointing. But bless God, it's all good. It really is. How come? God is always good. God always does good. There's never a time that God never does good. And then may I say thirdly, and we'll end on this. I've got more we'll cover, but we'll end on this thought. How do we know that God's good? Uh, number three, because God always works everything together for good. You knew I was going there. Uh, we know. How do we know that it's all good? Preacher, uh, this happened. And, uh, but you know what? I'm sorry about that. Uh, well, amen. It's all good, though. It's all good. And it's not just something you just throw out there because that's what you're supposed to say. It's something that it's like it really is. No, I'm sorry you're having to go through this. Oh, I know, but you know what? It's all good. It really is. It's all good. And I'm sorry that happened, but amen. Well, I know it's what I was expecting, but it's all good. It's all good. Uh, what are you saying? God's in control. It's all right. God's on his throne. It's all right. It really is. It really is all right. Why? Because God is always good, and God always does good. And because God always works everything together for good. You know the verse, but let's look at it. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8 and verse uh, 28. That's one we've memorized. Let me look at a couple of words here as we look at this verse in uh, verse, uh, verse number 28. Romans chapter 8. The Apostle Paul uh, is not expressing here some kind of wishful thinking or some pie-in-the-sky uh, theology of just, you know, uh, power of positive thinking and just think positive thoughts and everything will be okay. Uh, Joseph knew the intention of their heart to do him wrong, to do him evil. He knew that. He wasn't bearing his saying and said, well, you know, they didn't really try to hurt me and they really didn't know better and, and they just sort of didn't know what they were doing. He knew exactly what they were doing, but he still said, but God. Amen. But God. It really is. It really is. Uh, it's all good. Uh, and so look at Romans chapter 8, verse 28. And we know that all things work together for good. To them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. Paul says here, and we know. Paul's reminding his readers of a very precious and a very powerful fact. He says, I want you to know something. I'm glad I know I'm going to heaven. And that's a great study of the look of the word no in the Bible. And things God wants you to know. God wants you to know that he loves you. And, uh, but God also wants us to know all things are working together for good. Uh, how do I know that life, it's all good? It really is because God always, he always works everything together for good. Good is not a feeling that you feel. Listen now. Good is not a feeling you feel. It's a fact 
that you believe. You either believe it or you don't. Uh, if, you're, if, you're, if, you're feeling, if your feeling's based on goodness, then you're not going to feel things are very good much time of your life. But if feeling's based on a fact, fact, what's a fact? God is always good. What's a fact? God always does good. What's a fact? God is always working everything together for good. And so it's not how I feel. It's not uh, uh, my emotions. It's because it's a fact that God says that I believe it. Just because it doesn't feel good doesn't mean it isn't good. Listen, you go into surgery. It doesn't feel good. The rehab doesn't feel good. Uh, the trials don't feel good. But it doesn't mean it's not good just because it doesn't feel good. Paul's saying here, uh, all things. And he means that. He means everything, good and bad, happy and sad, pleasurable and painful. All things are going to work together for good. Is your faith strong enough tonight to believe that God can make something good come out of the bad situation in your life today? Is your faith strong enough to believe that God can turn the evil that's been done to you into something good? Is your faith strong enough to believe that all things work together for good? Is your faith strong enough to believe that God is good and God? God does good, and God always is working together all things for your good. It takes strong faith, strong faith to believe that no problem and no situation is so bad that our God cannot somehow use it for his purpose, for his glory, for our good, and for greater blessings. If you believe it, it takes that faith in the fact of knowing that all things. I know it, not because I feel it, but because God said we can know all things are going to work together for good to those that love God. And I keep, I keep my focus on loving Him and not ever question the love of God because of what's been allowed into my life and what situations I'm having to go through and, and what hardships I'm having to bear and burdens I'm having to carry and just to think that God doesn't care and God doesn't love me and God's not concerned. Oh no, i got to keep my understanding. God loves me and God is always good and God always does good and God always works together. Everything for my good and for His glory and for His purpose to be accomplished in each of our lives. And so tonight, uh, Paul isn't saying that everything that happens to you is good. Not everything that happens in your life is good. It intended of the devil, of evil. It wants to destroy your marriage. It wants to ruin your testimony. It wants to cause you to question God's goodness. It wants you to throw in the towel and quit. It wants you to raise up your hand and complain and get angry at God. Not everything in your life's good. It's meant for evil. But God can take all things, everything, and work it together. Hey, it's all good. It's all good. Boy, I'm sorry to hear about that. Oh, it's all good. It really is. And what a testimony we can begin to tell. Why is it all good? Because God's always good. And God always does good. And God is always working together behind the scenes. It doesn't mean everything comes into my life or your life is good. He says all things are working together for good. He's not claiming that you'll always see how all things work together for good. But you can know that God says, it's, but I don't see how this can work together for good. He doesn't say you have to see it. The just shall walk by what? Faith and not by sight. I don't see how this can be glorifying to God. I don't see how this can all work together. I don't either. But God says, you can know something. And God is good. God does good. And God always works everything according to his purpose and plan for his good and for our good. We can know it. We can take it to the bank. It's a fact we can believe. Not a feeling we have, but a fact that we can believe. Many times we only see the pain, the sorrow, the suffering, and how all of it is working against our good, not for it. But this is precisely the reason that Paul is teaching the truth here and why he wants to remind us of the truth. In the storms of life, you need to keep your eyes fixed on the lighthouse of God's promise that no matter which way the waves are tossing, we can rest assured that God is with us and will not allow us to be tempted above where we were able, but with the temptation, make a way of escape that we can bear it because God always, always works together everything for your good. For the good, God has a purpose, a plan for all that's going on in our lives. All that's going on in our lives. I don't understand. I don't agree. It's disappointing. It's hurtful. It's not fair. It's unjust. It's not right. But it's all good. It really is. It's all good. You say, how can it be so good? Look at our country. Look at our situation. Look at our uh, finances. Look at our health. Look at our relationships. Look at it. How can you say it's good? It really is. 
Because we're not looking at the situation or the circumstances. We're looking to God is always good. God always does good. Job understood that. He said, it's marvelous. It's marvelous. Now, I don't look at hardships like Job went through saying, this is a marvelous time I'm going through. These are marvelous things I don't understand. Uh, he saw it because he saw God in the midst. And then we know that it's all good. Really, it is. Why? Because all things, God always works everything together for good. Now, if we're going to be able to be a person that says it's all good, then we're going to have to do a few things. And we'll look at that next Sunday night, Lord willing. Uh, things that we're to do to be able to have the outlook to be able to say, it's all good. It's all good. It really is. It's not just something I'm saying. It's something I believe. It's something that I'm clinging to because it's what gives hope and courage and strength and, and determination and, and, and the, the wherewithal to get up another day with a smile on her face and to serve God and knock on another door and stand for right and to do right and to serve God. How can we do that? We've got to come to a place where we can say it's all good. It really is. It's all good. And your life and your attitude and your perspective tells the world that it really is all good. And next week we'll look at what we need to do so that we can say it's all good. Thank you, Father, for tonight. And, uh, Lord, the people of God that have gathered on this Sunday night. And, uh, Lord, we thank you for the word of God that you've given to us, Lord. And jo Joseph is such a wonderful testimony, a wonderful example, a role model to look to. He did not play God and says, I, I can't play God. I'm not God to not forgive you. He said, I, I forgave you a long time ago. I forgave you because if I didn't forgive you, then it would just boil and fester and, and uh, I'd be poisoned because of it. I forgave you a long time ago. Oh, there was a time I was upset. No doubt there was a time that I was angered and thought this was so unfair and unjust. He said, but it didn't last long. It didn't last long. He says, I got the victory over it and I forgave you. I gave it to God. In 13 years, I went through hardships. In 13 years, I went through unfair, unjust, not right times in my life. But God took what Satan meant, what you meant for evil. And praise the Lord, God meant it unto good. God meant it unto good. Lord, tonight I don't know all the disappointments that we may have in life. I know many of us are disappointed in the election. It's been a disappointment to us. Uh, but, Lord, um, we don't know how all the details are going to go and how everything's going to uh, fall out or pan out, Lord. But we do know this. With all the things in life that are so hard to go through and all the things that are so hurtful to bear and all the burdens that are so difficult to carry and all the obstacles that are so hard to pass through, we can know this. and We can say this. It's all good. It really is. It's all good. How come? Because God is always good. How come? Because God always does good. How come? Because God always works together for good. So tonight I pray you'd encourage the people of God that might be a little disheartened, a little bit discouraged, a little bit distracted, or feeling a little bit defeated, depressed maybe even. I pray, Lord, that you would just give us a renewed focus, a renewed hope. And we'd look at our lives and say, it's all good. It really is. It's all good. Our heads are bowed tonight and our eyes closed as a people of God. Let's stand. God has spoken to our hearts. I don't understand everything that happens. I don't agree with everything that happens. I, I don't like everything that happens. But we've got to be a people of God that can be able to look beyond life situations and be able to say, you know what? It's all good. It's all good. It really is. It's not just something that I, I say as a, as a passing terminology, just sounding spiritual. It's something that we want to embrace as a child of God. As you go through the heartaches of life, the disappointments, the delays, the hardships, to be able to say it's all good. It's all good. It really is. It really is. We'll look next time, Lord willing, if we're going to be able to be a person that says it's all good. There's a few things that we're going to have to do that is given to us 
in this story of Joseph that we'll use as our foundation. Some things we got to do to be able to say, yes, it really is good. It really is. We serve an awesome God. This is an awesome time of life to live and to represent our Savior. To stand for the King of kings and the Lord of lords. To represent Him and to represent Him well. To represent Him well. Thank you, dear Jesus, for the promises that you give us in your word to comfort us, to strengthen us, encourage us, motivate us. Father, in life's disappointments, and hurts and pains, sorrows, Though we may never understand all that's being done, though it may not feel good and though we may not see any good that can come of it, help us to be able to grow to the place in our lives to where we can really say, it's all good. It really is. It's all good. Lord, strengthen the people of God's faith tonight, those here and those Tuned in, watching through our live stream, Lord, just encourage us, please. All this world needs a people of God that says it's it's all good because God is still in control of every aspect, of every detail, of every avenue of our lives, of our cities, of our communities, of our country, of our world. Lord, we thank you that you never go to sleep. You're always on your throne, Lord. Bless us now. Keep us focused upon you. Give us safety as we travel home on the icy roads, Lord. Give us a good um, night of rest and a good week representing you well. And bless service again as we gather on Wednesday night. We love you. Thank you, Lord, for your love for us. In Jesus' name, amen.